Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm not Pastor Dan. <laughs> my name is Todd Ames. I've been here before. You may remember um, or may not remember. It depends on, on your psychology, whether or not you need to block it out. Um, I'm very excited to be here on this beautiful day. I love fluffy cloud mornings, and this is one of those. So it's going to be a great day, regardless of the weather. Um, I'd like to invite us all to come into a, a moment of centering as we enjoy the prelude. God keeps an eye on his friends. His ears pick up every moan and groan. If your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. The wicked waste their lives hating the good. Let us worship God, our protector. Please rise and body your spirit and join in our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, 
receive our forgiveness and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. Please join in our Kyrie. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading.
A reading from Joshua chapter 24. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And who did those great signs in our sight? He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. God. We will read the psalm responsively. <clears throat> the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken hearted, and to save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. A reading from Ephesians chapter 6. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly 
as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kids want to come up while we're singing? That would be great. week, isn't it? Is this the last week finally? Of what? Of what? You tell me. I thought you'd be looking forward to this. It's finally ending. Summer? Hmm? Summer? Summer's not over till like December. What? <laughs> so why would it be the end of the summer? Why would you say that? No, because school's coming up. Because school's coming That too? School's coming up as well? Are you guys excited about that? No! I am. No? I have to go to eighth grade. I have to go to school. She has to go to seventh. So me and her are going to be in the same school. Wow. You guys are all going to different grades. Do you have different classes you yes. have to go to? Yes. Are you nervous about finding your way? No, I, I went there last year. She doesn't know the school, so I'm going to have to help her find my school. Nice. You've got a partner already. You don't know the school, and she's going to help you. That's a lot of pressure. Do you? Are you guys looking forward to the lunches, to the food? Yes. <laughs> I was curious what sound that would generate. I'll tell you one thing, Chloe, that it's a lot better than Broadway, but it's not as good. Well, what I was talking about, this is finally the end of, is this is the last week. It has finally arrived in a five-week series in Jesus' discord on the Discourse on the Bread of Life. Oh, that was your next no. guess, wasn't it? <laughs> this will be the fifth week that the lectionary, which is what, it, the lectionary is a system that is devised that um, helps us to know what to lead, worship, and preach on every week. Yeah, it's a big, I just learned about it last year. Um, <laughs> but this is the fifth week on Bread of Life. So have you guys heard about Bread of Life the last few weeks? And Jesus talking about the Bread of Life? Just say yes, you can just look, that means you're taking it. Yep, yep. But it's, what, is it, what do you think it means, since you've had this would be four weeks that you've already done, what does it mean when you hear the words bread of life? I'm just thinking of bread. I just think of bread, yeah, I like that. Me too. And all the things that go in bread. Do you guys like bread? Uh, bread. You do, yeah? Imagine, can you imagine life without bread? What would lunch be like without oh. bread? Mm, messy. Messy. Yeah, like you guys have like. Do you guys do you guys eat like turkey, turkey sandwich? No. Not eat me, no. Um, ham. My daughters, I have three daughters. They all like ham, no. plain ham, ham with bread. That sounds like me. But can you imagine a sandwich? Can you imagine peanut butter and jelly without oh. bread? Oh. Just... But how? How would you eat? That? How would you transport it from the jar no, to your face? No. What? So you eat it off the spoon. Okay. Oh. Nice. Okay. You're, you're pretty. You're pretty inventive. I like that. But Jesus talks about being the bread of life in many different ways so far this summer. I, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And the bread of life that he's talking about is one of the interpretations is the word that he's the 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 word of God. Is that a lot of pressure? It's like more pressure than going into eighth grade. But can you imagine life, so we, I already asked you if you can imagine life without bread. What would be like another big deal? Like I'm the, I'm the round ball in gym class. Does that make sense? What? Yeah, see, no, no, yeah. That, 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 um, so you're a ball? What? Exactly. That's right, so you're a ball. That's what, a, that's what you, be, you would ask. I'm the peanut butter of lunchtime. Does that make sense? No. Uh, how? Yeah, how? Um, I am the 
tires of your car? I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Well, this is really cool because that's exactly how the disciples, the, the first people who heard these words, react as well. How? What? I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Today they say, this teaching is hard. Oh, it's difficult. Who can accept this is what they'll say. Oh, have you guys ever been, at, like now school starting after this week. So this is going to be a really fun week, yeah. right? But after this week, school starts. And if you guys remember school in prior years, has there ever been things that were hard to learn? Yes. Uh, What's a really hard thing to learn? Uh, multiplication. Multiplication. Mm. But now it's, I have too many classes. But now it's what? It's easy for me. But now it's easy for you because you learned it, right? Mm -hmm. you, guys, you guys like spelling? You guys remember when you first learned how to spell things? Yeah. Yeah? They weren't too hard? Yeah. Like anti disestablishmentarianism? <laughs> like in kindergarten, we had to spell cat. Spelling cat? Yeah. Oh. That's in German, it starts with a K. Does that what? make sense? Cat? That doesn't? It starts with a C. It starts with a C. So there's still some people that would have different understandings of what all this means. Even though we learn things, there's different languages and ways to understand things, even though we know them. Multiplication, not so much. That's pretty straightforward. Is it straightforward? <laughs> no. Somebody said no. Amen. <laughs> so that's what today's gospel is about, how hard it is for the disciples to learn things. And they reacted just like you all did when I talked about being the ball of gym class. I just made that up. I don't get that. That's, I know. They didn't either. That's what they said, except they said it in Aramaic. How are you supposed to be a ball if you're a human? They said, how, am I, how is he supposed to be bred if he's Jesus? It's, there are people laughing. There had to be people going, what? I don't get it. So you guys would make great disciples, and you will make, and you are great disciples. Because you know how to be one already. Well, we finished with a blessing. Can you guys help me with this blessing? I don't know. <laughs> Want to stand up? <laughs> so how did this go? You guys want to read this with me? <laughs> if your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. More to learn. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me 
unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned away, turned back, and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Well, like I mentioned, and you all may have know this in your calendars too, that this is the fifth week of what has been dubbed Jesus' Bread of Life Discourse. Every three years, the Revised Common Lectionary has us spend much of the summer kneading our way through the sixth chapter of John. See what I did there? Today, it all ends. Whew. Not coincidentally, this is also the most popular week for preachers to find someone else to preach. <laughs> After four weeks of hearing about the symbolism of bread, you can't wait to hear what I'm going to add today, can you? In case you've been away, Jesus is the bread of life. Period. Last week ended with Jesus taking the metaphor as far as I think you can by suggesting his followers eat his flesh. For those of you who mildly are paying attention, the first two verses of today's gospel overlap with the last two verses from last week. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. The disciples were flummoxed. But imagine being one of them. There, in that time, I'm sure that many of us here have heard the symbolism of the bread thousands of times in the Eucharist at the communion table. But imagine never have heard that, hearing this before. That's what the disciples were experiencing in today's, in today's gospel. These people closest to Jesus, who were part of the miraculous feeding of thousands of people, they helped distribute the food, who witnessed Jesus walk on top of and across the Sea of Galilee during a storm. But this idea of eating his flesh and drinking his blood went against a fundamental and unquestioned directive from Leviticus, their law of laws. Leviticus 17 makes no room for drinking blood, not because it's deemed unclean, but because of the very divinity assigned it. Jesus reassigns the source of his divinity and our divinity to the Holy Spirit today. And the disciples struggled a lot with this. John's Gospel today tells us that many of the disciples even said out loud, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? This teaching is hard. But honestly, Jesus has a lot of sayings that were hard, sayings such as, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You who are without sin, cast the first stone. Sell all you have and give it to the poor. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And if you seek to save your life, you will lose it. I totally understand the reaction of these disciples who say that these teachings are hard and asking who can accept them. In fact, John tells us because many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. You are here today. Good for you. So you might not understand why these disciples who had witnessed so much of Jesus' miracles and signs, why they would leave Jesus. But what about the people like these disciples who aren't here with us today? Not just the folks who used to join in worship with us, but then didn't like a hymn or for whatever reason. But also those who may have never worshipped the creator of our universe. In Pew Research's 2023's polling, 28% of U.S. adults are religiously unaffiliated, describing themselves as atheists, agnostics, or simply 
nothing in particular. When they're asked about their religion, they say none. This has grown from 16% in 2007. This is the fastest growing segment of the religious landscape, the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, not N-U-N-S. Nuns are now the largest cohort in the United States. They're more prevalent among American adults than Catholics, which represent 23%, and Evangelical Protestants, which are 24%. While the nuns' diversity splinters them into myriad subgroups, most of them have this in common. They really don't like organized religion, nor its leaders, nor its politics and social stances, I bet we all know people who are nuns. I bet if we were to have genuine conversations with these folks, we would hear the word hypocrisy a lot. We would hear some semblance of the words judged, judgy, or judgmental. Many of these nuns are critical of mainstream churches for prioritizing money over caring for people. These nuns tend to be younger, too. While nuns comprise 9% of the so-called silent generation and 18% of the baby boomers, the younger generations, Gen Z and millennials, are 34% and 29% nuns. For younger folks, their disaffiliation with religion is caught up in a broader distrust of major institutions and their leaders, not just religious ones. From the basics of a bowling league, which are diminishing in membership, to the American dream of home ownership, to the institution of marriage. We don't really give the younger generations much to invest their trust in. Who could blame them? As a society, and I'm not pointing my finger at any one of us, but collectively as a society on the whole, are we behaving in a way that deserves the trust and respect of the generations following us? That was rather rhetorical. The results of humanity's greed are everywhere, from the decline of honeybees to human trafficking. Our basest tendencies toward greed are becoming more routine. Our push for more, more, and more, or everything to be better, faster, and cheaper is not all that impressive. This teaching is hard. Now, before I get too negative, is it too late? There are other effects of this generational crisis caused by all of this. Not coincidentally, but consequently, these younger generations have broader feelings of loneliness. Some of this stems from our current rules of only being black or white on issues that are extremely gray. Being a human is one of the most difficult jobs on the planet. All of the nuances in our everyday lives make black and white a luxury, doesn't it? When we try to maintain what we think is control of what we influence, we try to force them into black and white options. And this creates silos among and between us. These silos start out as artificial, but begin to feel more real as we dig in behind the points that we're trying to make. These silos are the differences between us and them, whoever the us is and whoever the them is, on many, many issues. But at their core, these silos are just built and based on thoughts, beliefs, and philosophies. We are not different one from another. We are all children of a loving God gathered on a beautiful blue marble of a planet in the vast cosmos created by our creator. I think the growth of the nuns and their frustration with the labels and barriers created by religion could actually be a spark of reformation I think we all need in 2024. Their lack of interest in the labels we've conjured might cause us to focus, to shift our focus away from the silos that we've created to better see God. We will better see God's creation and gifts. We will better see God's mission in this world. We will better see our role in God's mission. 
we will better see each other. I found a quote from one who is unaffiliated, a nun, saying, the foundations of a lot of religions just love everybody, accept everybody. She gets that. But she considers herself more spiritual. I'm pretty into astrology. I've got my crystals charging up in the window right now, she said. Honestly, I'll bet half of it is total placebo. But I like the ideas that things in life can be explained by greater forces. I need to ask you to consider how open would each of us be to people with these beliefs? Are we okay with that? Or would we need to choose the very point that nuns make about the rigidity of Christianity, shifting it from perception to reality for them? I'm not saying that we would need to bend our core beliefs. I'm suggesting that we might return to our core beliefs. Many of you know that I have started a new congregation a little over a year ago in Vestal. We worship each week and have offered series after series of faith formation and discipleship opportunities over the last many months. And in very tangible, roll-up-our-sleeves ways, we have supported many efforts in our local community to fight hunger, end racism, call out bigotry and injustice. Yet I can proudly say we are not religious. We are very Christian and we seek to follow Christ as closely as our hearts, hands, and feet can get. We do not follow the traditions of a traditional Lutheran church. One example, rather than reciting what is called the Lord's Prayer, we spent eight weeks breaking it down, exploring alternative versions, and coming to understanding the intentions and words as Jesus intended. You will not find our order of worship in the new blue book, the red book, the old blue book, or the old, old green book. We've spent weeks unpacking popular stories from the Bible and hearing them and wrestling with them as the people of Jesus' time might have. Our ongoing deconstruction of our traditional religion has served to better ground each of us, and it strengthened our community of faith. A little over a year ago, we started out with five people. We're currently up to 12 in regular work, re weekly worship, with some large occasions pushing us up over 50 in attendance. Those people who have joined us are people who would consider themselves largely unaffiliated. Our deconstruction of religion has provided space for people who want to see Jesus in an honest, no-rules approach. They want to see the authentic Jesus found in the Gospels. I'm not saying that any so-called traditional church is not connecting to the authentic, the authentic Jesus of the Gospels. I am just saying that we set aside traditions. To some outsiders, the language, rituals, and apparent code with which we worship sometimes are simply too difficult to understand. It's too hard. As a result, we are building relationships with each other and learning to build relationships with even more people who want to see Jesus, but can't see past the walls of our churches. In those relationships that break down the walls, we reach across bitter personal histories that some may have had with the church, and we connect anew to people in more societal silos than we can count. We've taken the opportunity of building a new church to start as if no church has existed. Our relationships with each other are the relationships that Jesus taught us and want for us. At its simplest, Jesus' message was when it comes to your neighbors, love them. When it comes to your enemies, love them. That pretty much covers it all. And yes, that teaching is difficult, but it's necessary. That's what the world needs. That's what the nuns need. And that's what you all need. And that's what I need. Amen. Please join in our hymn of the day, number 400.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put its trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct preachers, teachers, writers, and all the baptized and faithful speech and bold witness. Today we pray especially for the Hornbeck family, the Immerman family, and the Jacobson family. Merciful God, Creator God, we and all creation are sustained by your word. We pray for all who remind us of our interconnectedness with all living things. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, ELCA advocacy, and local climate justice advocates. Merciful God, God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election year, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and bring about change where you see fit. Sustain all who serve in the military, especially Alfred Stevenson, Dylan Hornbeck, and Ryan Quarry. Help them bring change where they can. Merciful God, God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you, especially Robert Allen, Paul and Julie Daughterly, Lois Wolf, and those we name within our heart. Where pain is sharp, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. Care for those on our hearts and minds. Merciful God. God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new school year. Bring an end to violence, big and small, and the cycles that follow. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. Merciful God. God of every generation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal callings to serve you faithfully until our journeys end. Merciful God, we lift up those we pray for you, gracious God. Re receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another and those attending virtually. continues with the presentation of our offering.
Riley just got older. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the Feast of Plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks. And he gave it to all to drink, for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, but that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table for all of us with more than enough for all of us. Come.
rise for the blessing. May this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ protect you and keep you in his grace now and forever. table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for announcements. The first announcement is that we have five people um, worshiping with us online today, and those that can be identified so far are Ruth Riesbeck, pardon the pronunciation, <laughs> Margaret Davies, and Diana Rackley. Welcome. Are there other announcements? Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to remind you of the Fill the Truck event coming up for God's Work Our Hands Sunday on September 8th. I will have a table set up in the narthex if you want to bring your stuff early next Sunday. Um, you can bring that and just leave it there. We'll take care of the rest. And I also wanted to remind you that on September 17th, we'll be doing our final justice journey. We'll be going to the Robert H. Jackson Center in Jamestown, New York. Jackson, if you didn't know, served as a U.S. Solicitor General, U.S. Attorney General, and U.S. Supreme Court Justice, as well as Chief U.S. Prosecutor of the International Military Tribunal in Nuremberg. So the center exists to celebrate not just Jackson, but the universal principles of equality, fairness, and justice to which he dedicated his life. Um, this happens to be the 80th anniversary of the, the Supreme Court decision Korematsu versus the United States, which um, uh, upheld the constitutionality of ordering Japanese Americans into internment camps, you may recall that. His daughter, Karen Korematsu, will be the guest speaker that day, so that was one of the reasons we wanted to go out there on the 17th. The other is it just happens to be Constitution Day, and she will be speaking specifically to that. So we hope you can join us. The sign-up sheet is out on the right side table in the narthex. Yeah. Great. I, when was I, I want to go? Uh, August has only about four Sundays. September has five, which means the end of September is noisy offering. So start collecting your coins. Um, firstly, I want to give Judy a thank you. Judy has been upstairs with us, helping us um, with the slideshow, and she keeps us she keeps us in line, and that's a really, really big help. So, Judy, thank you very, very much for for doing that. Um, secondly, just a reminder uh, for everyone to stay after worship today. We will be holding um, uh, the congregational meeting to vote on the additional funds needed to repair the bell tower, and. Uh, so just uh, stay and, oh, and also it'll take, for those of you who are watching and then want to join via Zoom, um, it'll take Kirk about 10 minutes to make that transfer um, over. So um, you'll be a few minutes that before we will be actually be able to start the meeting, but please don't go away. Thanks. Are there other announcements? There are. I want to thank Todd for joining us today. Oh, thank <laughs> and you. And for just a wonderful thank message. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all very much. I, I really appreciated being here. And I think the last time I was here, I talked about how striking your announcements are, and they are part of worship, your announcements are. They're just incredible announcements. 
as opposed to just day to day. You guys got great announcements. <laughs> we rise for the benediction. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Please join in our sending hymn number 838. Thank you.